Imagine if the governor of a typically left-leaning state, let's say California, was given the power to overturn the results of an election in a specific county in that state, which happens to lean conservative. That would be ridiculous to give the governor that power, right? Except it has happened, just with the parties flipped. In Texas this week, the Republican-controlled state Senate passed a proposal that would give Republican Governor Greg Abbott's appointed Secretary of State the power to overturn elections, but strictly in Harris County, where Houston is located, a typically Blue County. Presumably, the legislation is an effort to ensure Harris County gets their act together. On Election Day of 2022, at certain precincts, they ran out of paper, resulting in many people being forced to other polling sites or ultimately not being able to vote at all. So that was a big problem. Definitely. Needs to be fixed. Absolutely. But is the solution allowing the governor the power to overturn the results in a county that just happens to lean towards the other side? Seems insane. Harris County, Texas is the state's largest county in population, and not too long ago it skewed Republican. The population has skyrocketed. The political demographics have shifted. 2020 election, Donald Trump won Texas's 38 electoral votes with over 52% of the vote, but lost Harris County, getting only 42. Greg Abbott, who won his election for governor with 55% of Texas's vote, lost to Democrat Beto O'Rourke in Harris County, getting only 44. And Republican John Cornyn won his 2020 senatorial race with over 53, only got 44% of Harris County. Now, if they run out of paper, at at least 2% of the county's polling sites for any more than an hour, the Secretary of State, appointed by the governor, has the power to overturn the results of that election and determine whether there should be a new one. Now, we always like to have both sides on issues on this show. So joining me now is Texas Republican State Senator Mays Middleton, who authored and co-sponsored the bill. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. What am I missing here? I appreciate you having me on, Dan. So this is really specific bill for a specific issue that we saw. You know, Harris County is the largest county in the state, and we only saw one of our 254 counties have problems with running out a ballot paper at a number of polling locations in the 2022 election, and it was systemic. Uh, 121 polling locations, so that's 16 percent of polling locations in Harris County experienced paper ballot shortages uh, and thousands of people were disenfranchised because of that. So what this bill does is it makes sure that that doesn't happen again and that everybody that shows up to vote gets to vote and they're not denied ballot paper. But it seems to me that maybe we're confusing problem with solution, right? I think everyone agrees there was a problem, right? It was a big problem. The question becomes, is the way to solve that to give the, the governor the power to determine through a secretary of state whether to overturn an election? I mean, that that seems like dangerous business. Well, it's actually not the governor. Uh, so it's the secretary of state who's our chief elections officer who was confirmed unanimously in the Texas Senate. All Democrats and Republicans voted to confirm Secretary of State Jane Nelson. And this is a very prescribed remedy. Of course, uh, we hope it never happens, and we hope that they simply just deliver enough ballot paper. I mean, it's a really simple solution to this problem. And you think about the magnitude of it. You know, if Harris County were its own state, it would have more electoral college votes than 33 yeah. other states. So this is a huge issue. You know, when you look at the number of polling locations that ran out of paper, and, you know, a number of them are concentrated in Republican-leaning areas. So you have to think there was a maybe a partisan design to this to deny ballot paper to particular areas but, within Harris. But there's no evidence of that, right? I mean, you've looked at, yes, it was slightly more, when you look at the, the leanings, it was close, but slightly more Republican-leaning areas ran out of paper. There's no evidence that this was done on purpose. That seems like a dangerous thing to start suggesting, and therefore a remedy becomes, well, we're going to let the Secretary of State, and again, I'm not in any way demeaning the Secretary of State by saying this. I just mean allowing a political figure to then decide if an election should be overturned. Well, it's really not the right way to describe this overturning. They call a new election, so everybody okay. gets a new election. Again. Call it a everybody new, gets call it a new election. Because because people were denied the ability to vote. So I think the proper remedy when that happens, when it's systemic and people were denied the ability to vote, the right thing to do is call a new election and give them 
that opportunity to vote. And, and there is a lot of evidence, 121 out of 782, that's 16% of polling locations. That is a lot. That is a huge problem. So, so would you support, if this was flipped, you saw the example I created at the top, right? If in California, they'd had a problem with a Republican district, same issue, right? And Gavin Newsom, Secretary of State, gets to decide whether to have a new election based on if they have these kinds of problems again. It would make you nervous, would it not, if you were a California representative? This remedy doesn't have any partisanship to it. You know, at the end of the day, you're disenfranchised if you can't vote because there's not ballot papers. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.